Hi everybody, welcome out to the Dice Tower. My name is Chris Yi, and today I'm going to be taking a look at a game called Balada. This is a game about being a melodious bard, regaling the heroic tales of a brave knight. You, uh, you know, look at, I mean, look at the cover, look at that knight. He's like, yeah, this is the part of the story where it make me look really cool this song. I beat up the goblins and then sing something cool like, Toss a corn to your witcher, O Valley of Plenty, O Valley of Plenty. Toss a corn to your witcher. Set up for a game of balada. This is a player sheet here. You are eventually going to be filling in all of these spaces, such that at the end of a tur at the end of the round, your hero will start his quest here and continue along this path all the way up to the top of the mountain. There's three decks of cards that are shuffled up together. We're going to reveal one from each deck for the for each turn here. So for the first turn. In the mountain region, or in one of the mountain regions on your player board, you're going to have to draw either a fish or a sword. And so we'll say that I draw a sword over here. We don't do anything with these yet. We're uh, only going to be filling these all in, and then at the end of that whole round, we'll be taking our hero questing through the realm here. So now, in a four space, I can either draw a treasure chest or a number two monster. So in the forest space over uh, over here, I'm going to draw the treasure chest because I want to open that bad boy along my journey, and then we'll continue along. You just keep doing this. So in a mountain region, I'm going to draw a number three monster. So I'll just draw that fella right over here. Eventually, if I could slay that, it's going to be worth three points. And perhaps that's what I'm using these swords for. Now here, I could either choose to, in a forest region, draw a heart or a tower castle. The tower castle is going to be worth points if I have a key, uh, and it's also going to increase the strength of the numbered monsters that are adjacent to it. The heart over here is going to heal me if I take wounds by running into these monsters without having a sword. Uh, so anyway, there, there's a lot of uh, little things going on here, but I'm just going to go ahead and, and do the tower. I will draw that. Fantastic tower, best in the biz. So you just keep going along, and hey, look at that. In a forest space, I can either put a number five monster, which is worth five points if I slay it, or I can do a key. I'm going to do a key right here in the beginning, so on and so forth. So you just see, oh, now here's the desert terrain. There's a magic portal. There's, um, uh, there's a, another monster. That's a different number. So you're going to go through all 12 of the terrain cards, all 12 of the basic cards, of the A's, and then in the B's, there's a little bit more than 12 so that you get some variety. You may or may not see some of these. You may not see that many fish each round. You may not see the princess. You may not see uh, a second portal or anything. So basically, you always choose one of the two things plus the type of terrain. So now, let's take a look here. This is a completed version of the Ballad of Sir Thunder McScruggins. Uh, I don't know if you can see that here, so I've written everything in on this one. So now let's go through and resolve all of the effects shown on here. So with this portal that I drew in the first space, you can erase any one space and take that drawing and put it to the front of the path. So I've got a uh, sword here, so I would go ahead and, and draw a circle around the sword. Then I've got a fish. Fish is simply going to be set collection for how many fish you have. I've got a second sword here, I would circle that sword. I run into a number four monster. I can then use a sword to defeat it, or I could take wounds. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take four wounds. One, two, three, four. Why would I choose to take wounds instead of using the sword? Well, because the next base is a heart. That fairy fountain allows me to heal my wounds, and so I would cross out these wounds and score four points, because if we are balladeers, uh, the hero getting inflicted with wounds, but then healing them is overcoming adversity. This spot was crossed out and sent back to the portal. Then we go to the number five space. I'm going to defeat this number five monster by spending one of my swords. Uh, that's why I have that sword crossed out. And now this one is worth another five points. Then I could heal up over here. Oh, maybe I'll take the damage and then heal up. And then I can fight this three and then I can heal up and then I can... Uh, so anyway, you just kind of go through this whole path and you score up th the front side of it. And then you play a knight side, which is the exact same thing, but it's the return from the mountain. You do another, you shuffle up all the cards, and you just go through back the other way. So the things that I haven't explained yet, the uh, towers, if you have a key, when you hit the tower, you get two points. 
Uh, there's a boss monster, which is worth a number of points. If I drew the boss right here, and I had two swords, when I fought the uh, when I fought the boss, I could cross off both swords, and then the boss would give me one point for every remaining space before the end of the path. So in this case, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, if you have a key and a treasure chest, you can open up the treasure chest, and you'll earn points for the number of spaces between the key and the treasure chest. So in this case, five, six. Um, uh, fish is a set collection, so based if you have one, two, or three fish, you'll earn one, four, or nine points. Uh, and that's that's pretty much it. Uh, the the princess, there's some special scoring for her based on how many of the of the bad things came in the path before her. You just play both sides. You add up your score from both parts of the adventure, and whoever has the highest amount of points is the winner. So you can see Ballad is a small, little, charming-looking game. I really like the art. I really like the presentation. I like the look of it. I think that for the most part, this game, uh, from just the aesthetic standpoint, looks pretty neat and cool, and I like it, and I was attracted to it because of this idea of, you know, the thematically sure, right? You're, you're drawing stuff in a line and then going down the line. But I like this idea of recounting heroic tales and such. I think that's cool. The problem is that the graphic design is not always up to snuff with this. Uh, I, I think that there's some moments of confusion about how to score things that, one, I think the scoring of certain items is a little bit complicated for what uh, investment this game takes. Uh, and then two, the bottom of the page doesn't explain everything that well. It explains certain things, like if you get one, two, or three fish, one, four, or nine points. Great. I like that. That's good shorthand in there to remind me of how things score. But not everything is shown. Not everything shows how it scores. The towers doesn't say, hey, two points if with key. Um, key and treasure chest doesn't show you number of steps in between, but not including the spaces. Uh, and then the boss, if you defeat it, count the number of spaces uh, between it and the end, but including its own space, right? So I think for one part, some of those scorings are silly, a little bit more complicated than they need be, uh, and two, also, there's not an easy shorthand for all of that stuff, and so instead it leaves these little areas on the bottom, say, hey, how many points did you score for boss? And it doesn't remind you, hey, spaces after boss until the end of the track. Uh, I like the general conceit of the game, right? Flip over a terrain, flip over two options. Write one of those two options in a terrain. Good. Easy. A uh, good kind of choice that you have because you have a choice of which forest terrain that you're going to fill in and also with which thing. It sometimes feels like the game plays itself a little bit, kind of like if you're playing a trick-taking game, right? Some of the things are prescribed. Swords, better early, not later, right? Uh, a boss, better earlier, but not so early that you won't have two swords, right? So th things like that they fall into place a little bit, but you do have choices, and I appreciate that. If you did not have the A and the B deck to choose from, I think the game would play itself. So I think that between those, the amount of choices you have, it's not overwhelming uh, in that part, but it's good. The problem is, once again, you have 11 different things to explain. Key, treasure chest, tower. Towers make the two adjacent number spaces stronger. Number monsters, you take wounds and you can heal them for points, or if you have a sword, you can defeat the, the monster for the number of points that it could damage you otherwise. If you get six wounds, you cross them all out, you're too wounded, you can't heal and earn those points again. Those are confusing points to teach for what is a really simple game. I like the simplicity of it, I don't like the fiddliness of it all. In fact, uh, on one of the games that I played, someone was drawing extra heart boxes and crossing them out because he just had a harder time visualizing how much health and how many wounds he had, what was the wound point at which he lost the ability to use a heart space to heal the wounds, to earn points, why are you earning points for the wounds that you take that you heal, the same number of points that you get for defeating the number monster, uh, you know, but I, I think that thematically it actually kind of works well in the sense that I took five damage, and then I healed up, right? A, a hero being regaled in his story, uh, in his ballad, is, uh, you know, you, you gotta go low so that you can rise up from it all, right? The hero's journey type thing. I think there's little touches like that that are cute and thematic, but not all of the thematicness translates to comprehension of game rules, and that's where I think that this struggles a little bit. 
so simple. Play the day side, play the night side, the hero goes up, and then the hero comes back home, right? That's cool. But I think that this could have been refined a little bit more and made just a little bit simpler so that it leans a little bit more into that simple gameplay side of things. Good choices sometimes, but, you know, too much explanation up front for how quick of a game it is. It takes almost as long to teach what the 11 different things do, and I hate teaching the princess one because you get points based on the number of, of difficult things that you faced before it, like monsters, but only in a row. I, I, I hate teaching that part of it. I hate teaching the tower. Okay, remember, that tower there makes that four behind it and the three in front of it actually a five and a four. But if you come to it with a key, then it's also worth two points itself. If you don't have a key before it, then it's not worth any points. All it does is make the monster stronger. This needed to be refined, cleaned down a little bit more, cut some of those rough edges off, and it would have been good. So overall, I'm going to give Balada a six. Uh, this is by a company, Albi, that I've not heard of, but I'm interested in them now because I, th I think that they have a good aesthetic. I think they have a good idea of kind of a unique theme and everything, but that's, that charm of the game is not enough to carry past the fact that it's a little bit clunky to teach, and a, a roll-and-write game this simple, or a flip-and-write, or whatever you want to call it, roll-and-write, right, is, uh, you know, it thrives on teachability. Hey, everyone, come check this one out. Ha-ha, <laughs> let's play and that this one doesn't have it. So six out of 10 for me, I think it's, I think it's charming, but not charming enough. So that's my thoughts there. Uh, thank you so much for coming by the Dice Tower. My name is Chris Yee. Hope you have yourselves a great day. Toss a coin to your witcher, O oh, Valley of Plenty, O oh, Valley of...